advertise on websites like Wedding Wire, Weddings.com, The Knot. Let me know if you guys have advertised and let me know what the turnout was. Another Q and A video. You send in the questions on Instagram, bam, right there, and Snapchat, bam, right there. You can follow me on those social media platforms to send in your questions for the next Q and A video. Also, a lot of you guys have been asking me about the mini mic boom giveaway. I am still hosting it. I just underestimated how long it was going to take me to get to 3,000 followers on Instagram. I'm only about a hundred away, so it's getting there. I'm still hosting the mini mic boom giveaway. If you haven't done so already and you'd like to enter for your chance to win this little mini mic boom, you can still do so by following me on Instagram and commenting on this picture right there. I'm I'm only about a hundred followers away from hitting 3,000. I'm sorry, it took a lot longer than I expected. I thought it was gonna take about a month to get there, but it's been about a month and some change. But fear not, the giveaway is not canceled. I'm still hosting it. You can still enter it if you haven't done so. All right, let's get into this questions. What do you say we start on Instagram first? SLG85 asks, Serato Scratch Live or Serato DJ? Uh, I'm gonna have to say Serato DJ just because I can't use Serato Scratch Live anymore. Some of you guys were asking me why I don't use Serato Scratch Live anymore. If you remember uh, in December when I was doing the daily vlogs, you saw that my computer broke. So I took it into Apple and when they fixed it, they gave it back to me running the latest version of Mac OS, which is Sierra. And Mac OS Sierra doesn't support Serato Scratch Live. It's really buggy if you tried to use it on Sierra. So I just gave up on using it. I made the switch to completely use only Serato DJ as opposed to Serato Scratch Live. If you haven't made the switch from Scratch Live to Serato DJ, I suggest you do that soon. Don't wait till the last minute to do so because you don't want Serato Scratch Live crapping out on you at the last minute. So I would just suggest that you switch to Serato DJ. It still has its bugs, but they're getting there. I like Serato DJ now and I love the fact that I get so many more samplers. You get eight now as opposed to six. So I'm really excited about that. DJ Progeny asks, I am 18 years old who managed to get himself into a residency at a club for a whole month. I am wondering what is next after this stage. Look for more clubs, man. You got to keep hustling. You got to try to grow your fan base. Try to grow on social media platforms. Just keep hustling, man. Good for you. Congratulations on getting your first club. But I say, man, just keep hustling. Keep grinding. Keep looking for new spots. Don't get too comfortable in one spot because clubs don't last. DJ Flo asks, what are some key Spanish words to know if you are a DJ? Are you talking about if you're an American DJ? If you're an American DJ and you find yourself in front of a Latin crowd, the only phrase that I can think of off the top of my head to say on the mic to get them pumped up is say, donde están los Latinos? That's basically, where are my Latinos at? So if you say that, you should get a little pop. At least I hope so. So memorize that. Donde están los Latinos? Without the accent is, donde están los Latinos esta noche? DJ Sergio asks, what is the best way to market your DJ company? This is a tough one for me to answer because I wasn't very organized until actually this year. Last year was my first year that I actually started taking in all the mobile gigs that I would get inquiries for. Before then, I wasn't really taking mobile gigs. I would pick and choose whether or not I wanted to do the mobile gigs. And that's just because I was doing clubs. I wanted to do clubs and I was doing at least three to two nights a week. So if I wanted to, I would do a mobile gig. If not, I wouldn't do it. That wasn't my preference. I really wasn't into the mobile gig game. So Last year was my first official year that I was doing a lot more mobile gigs than usual. I did about two gigs per month last year. This year is the first year that I'm getting a bit more organized. I'm getting a little bit more branding and I've been starting to promote myself on Facebook. As far as marketing wise, I would say social media is probably the best because all those gigs that I got last year was through word of mouth and social media mostly being Facebook. This year I did decide to start doing a bit of marketing on Facebook. If you guys like my Facebook fan page and you guys have seen that I've been posting promos about my DJ service. Um, luckily, I'm pretty good with Photoshop, so I've been able to make a couple of flyers for myself and then I pay Facebook to promote them for me. Also, you guys saw the promo video that I made 
last week. Now it's tough for me to say if the ads are working because I really haven't gotten any calls because of the ads. Most of the gigs that I booked up from this year are not because of the Facebook promo. From what it looks like right now, the Facebook ads aren't really working right now. I don't know if it's just the off season. The beginning of the year is always the off season. Once spring picks up, then I start doing a couple more gigs, but I'm not really sure. I think this year I should be able to do about the same, maybe a couple more mobile gigs than I did last year. But right now I'm still only booking up about two gigs per month, which is pretty bad. But considering that this is my first year promoting, it's still better than nothing, I want to say. Now, one of the things that I have noticed after running Facebook ads is that a lot of other companies are seeing that I'm running ads and they're calling me to run more ads with them. So I've been getting calls from the not WeddingWireWeddings.com to advertise on their websites. Now it is a good idea to have a profile on all those websites, but unless you're paying them, you're probably not going to get any traction. The prices are ridiculously insane. They're really expensive and usually you have to commit to about six months to a year. So it's really expensive to advertise on websites like WeddingWire, Weddings.com, The Knot, and all those things. Let me know if you guys have advertised and let me know what the turnout was. But I would say the best way to get your name out there is to create social media accounts and try to grow your following and word of mouth word of mouth is golden in this business referrals 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 DJ Obi-Wan asks what's better for starting out a CDJ with mixers a controller or turntables it depends on really what you want to do but looking towards the future the future is moving towards controllers so I would say invest in a controller if you're just starting out now if you want to do turntablism then you have no option then invest in turntables like I said my favorite are are the techniques but those are really expensive but looking towards the future if you want to stay future proof I would say invest in a controller that seems to be where the industry is heading DJ Ivan asks, how much do club DJs get paid club DJs don't get paid that much if you're on the radio then you'll probably be making decent money most radio DJs make anywhere from I want to say 300 up to 800 depending on what shift on the radio you have and how big your following is so radio DJs they make a lot of money if you're a really famous radio DJ then you're getting paid about a thousand bucks to two thousand bucks per set so that they make a ridiculous amount of money but radio DJs are the ones who make a lot of money because they're able to book at least two three clubs in one night and they charge about 300 so that's good money. You make about 900 in one night. Now, resident DJs, those guys don't make that much. I have to be honest with you guys. I topped out at about 300 bucks per night. That was the max I ever got paid. That was the most I ever got paid at a nightclub. But like I said, you're only doing about an hour set. But if you're just starting out, expect to get 50 bucks. 80 bucks, 100 bucks. I want to say 100 bucks is like the medium for an hour set. You'll probably get 100 bucks. That's where guys usually start out at. And uh, some places they won't even pay. And like I've said in the past, it doesn't matter how good you are. It's all about how many people you can get into the door. Also, there are some clubs that charge you per head. So depending on how many people say your name at the door, you might get two to five dollars per head. So let's say you bring in, I want to say 100 people, then you'll be making good money. But if you bring in, let's say, two people then you're only gonna make 10 bucks so uh club guys get screwed don't believe the hype those guys aren't making that much money but i would say the average price for a club guy is usually about 150 to 300 and 300 is a lot in the club game what is the hardest music for you to mix i would say one of the hardest genres to mix is probably salsa salsa is pretty hard or anything that's recorded with a live band it's really hard for a live band to keep exact tempo that's why house is so easy to mix because it's done on a computer and the computer can keep 128 beats per minute throughout the whole song. It's really tough to do that if you're a human. It might fluctuate up and down. So salsa is really tough to do, especially live. Anything that's live, actually, it's really hard to mix. DJ SBS, are you ever coming to the UK? If so, let me know so that I can hook you up at some of the clubs I am resident at. Keep up the good work, DJ SB from Manchester, England. Shoutouts to you, DJ SB, and thanks for the invite. I don't think that'll happen this year, maybe in the future. If I do go to Manchester, I'll keep you posted because uh, that would be awesome. I've always wanted to go to England, and uh, shout out to you, man. Thank you for watching. DJ Esto as hey man, I also have a vlog channel. Shout out to you, DJ Esto, and shout out to your vlog channel, DJ Esto. He asks, what are your travel plans for this year? 
Um, I have a couple of trips set up. Um, I want to announce officially that I have booked the California trip. I am going to be there mid-June, I think June 16th. I am going to be flying out to San Francisco and I'm going to spend a couple of days in that area and then by Wednesday I have to be in LA for VidCon. Let me know right now if you want to meet up. I will be in San Francisco and I'll be road tripping down to LA and then I'll be leaving from LA probably that following Monday. So I will be in California for about 10 days. So I'm excited for that and then in the fall I always take another trip but that's probably gonna be in the middle of nowhere somewhere because I love national parks I love photography you guys know that so in the fall I'll be taking another trip I'm looking at Washington or Oregon there's a couple of national parks that I want to see there or Montana or also uh, Colorado so I'm not sure but I don't think any of you guys live down in those areas but I'm planning a trip in the fall to go get some pictures and in just three weeks time, I'm going away for a little birthday trip. Me, Linda, and a couple of friends are going away to another country. So uh, that's coming up in just three weeks time and I'm going to be vlogging the whole thing. So be on the lookout for that. DJ Edson asks, can you give me some tips on vlogging? Like which camera and how to vlog? Um, yeah, one of the main tips that I see a lot of you guys who are just starting out vlogging make is that you guys hold the camera wrong. Hold the camera at eye level. Don't hold it down here. Hey guys, how's it going? And all you can see is like your nostril. Don't vlog with the camera down. That shows that you guys don't have confidence or that you guys are like kind of scared. So I see a lot of you guys vlogging from like down below, like you're holding your camera down here and looking down at it. That's a really unflattering look for your face. So don't do that. Get your camera up. Up, up right in front of you and talk directly to it also another tip that I can give you is do it a lot just get out there and vlog even if you don't post the videos just go out there and vlog because the more you talk to the camera the more comfortable you'll get I look back at my old videos and I cringe because they were so bad also pro tip something that a lot of vloggers neglect is lighting lighting is so important it's gonna make your videos look so much better if you pay attention to lighting a tip I can give you is to always film in front of the a window like right now I am in front of a window so that's why my face looks so clear because I am filming in front of a window there's a window right behind you guys and when you're vlogging outside make sure that the Sun is not behind you make sure that it's in front of you that'll light your face up a lot better and as far as cameras go I link all my cameras down in the description of my video so check the description I have all the equipment that I use both DJ and vlog equipment cameras accessories tripods all that is listed in the description of my video so check it out but right off the bat what camera do I recommend the Canon G7X I use the mark 2 that's the newer one I love this bad boy that is what I film all my videos on and I think it looks pretty crispy DJ Ray asks, what are your thoughts on having packages I know you mentioned that you have different ones but most clients want to know a price before they want to meet and talk with you what do you think yes you are right generally when clients call you they're gonna want a price right off the bat when they call you, they say, hey, I'm looking for a DJ. How much do you charge to DJ? So what I generally do is I tell them the price of my most basic package. And I say, hey, my packages start at $650 per four hours. Then I explain to them, hey, let's meet up so I can show you pictures of the parties of some of the different setups that we have, lighting and all that stuff. And that's when you start to upsell things. So when clients call you, just tell them your base price. That way you can work up from there. And if they think that your base price is too low, then they're probably not gonna call you. They're gonna say, oh, thank you, we'll, we'll give you a call. But most of the time I find that clients do wanna meet up. And when you do meet up with them in person, it's a lot easier to get the gig because you're able to sell yourself face to face and then when you do meet up with them talk them up get to know them explain to them the packages explain to them what they offer recommend a package for them depending on what they're looking for and sometimes offer a discount maybe offer like a hundred bucks off even if you're gonna you know take a little hit offer like a hundred bucks off a package or something like that if it means that they're gonna book a higher end package but yes I definitely do recommend having different packages I started making a lot more money when I started offering packages to customers because before I felt like I would be losing money I would just take all the equipment and then just charge a base price depending on what I thought I could get out of those people that's a bad idea not all parties require a thousand dollar DJ so you might lose gigs if you do that also not everybody wants to have the night club wedding and that's something that I've learned 
over the last year doing parties. Not everybody wants all the flashy lights. And me coming out of the club, I was a bit arrogant because I thought, oh, everybody who has a mobile party just wants to have a nightclub feel. And that's not the case. Some people want like a more chill, light wedding. They don't want all the flashy lights, all that stuff. Some people just want two speakers and a DJ. That's it. They don't want any of the fancy stuff. And that's something that you have to understand when you're in this business. Not everybody wants all the flashy lights, all that stuff. So it makes sense to have packages. What do you guys think about this setup? Huh? 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 I want to introduce a new segment to my vlog where we have a look at setups and maybe critique them and tell you what I think. So I've been toying with this idea where you guys can send me in pictures of your setups and then I'll show them right here on the vlog. I'll tell you which ones I like, which ones I don't like. And uh, I think this would be a cool idea. Let me know if you guys think this is a good idea. Let me know if you guys would send me pictures of your setup so that we can critique them, have a look at them. I've been getting a lot of pictures from you guys that you guys are sending me and uh, I like to feature some of your setups because some of your setups are crazy good. So uh, I think I will introduce that where we have a look at DJ setups and I'll talk about them, discuss about the lights, discuss about the things that are in the setup. Maybe we do this uh, maybe in the next two weeks or so. Let me know if you guys would like to participate in that if it's a good idea. Dano asks, will you be going to the DJ Expo this year? Um, I want to go. I think it's usually in Atlantic City. I've never been to a DJ Expo or NAM or anything like that. I'd like to go. Um, maybe I will go this year. Let me know if you guys know where it's at. If it's in Atlantic City, then I'll put my best foot forward to go. DJ Mike J asks, how tall are you? What is your favorite genre of music? I am 4'10", 250 pounds, and my favorite genre of music is bachata. Most of you guys don't believe me that I am short, but guys, I am really, really short. So if you ever meet me in person, don't be like freaked out by how short I am. I am four foot ten and I'm really fat. And also I have an asthma problem so I breathe really really hard. I breathe like Darth Vader. <gasps> so many questions I might have to end the Q&A here look at how many questions more I have to go I'm gonna start doing these more frequently luckily this time there were different questions because last time I was just getting repeat questions as always if you know the answers to any of these questions or you want to answer them yourself you guys think I did a bad job feel free to answer them down in the comments below. Also, one of the questions that was most asked is how to market yourself, how to get more gigs. A lot of these guys are saying that they don't have that many gigs and um, it's the slow season in the summertime and the spring. That's when things start picking up. I'm slow myself. Winter is the worst time of the year for parties. Shout outs to you if you're booked up this time of year, but uh, unfortunately I'm not. And a lot of these guys asking me how to get more gigs and I just don't know. There's no magic answer to get more gigs. So if you guys know, help those guys out all right that's it sorry for ranting i know this video probably ran super long and i'm sorry if i didn't get to your questions but they were just way too many this video would be an hour long if i kept answering questions i hope you enjoyed this q a please leave any questions comments and concerns down below be sure to like it if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe if you're new around here have a look around the channel we got a bunch of dj content a bunch of travel videos so feel free to look around and subscribe if you're not subscribed and don't forget to turn on down bell so that you can stay up to date with all my videos thank you guys for being awesome and stay awesome bros Peace.